Yo, what's up everyone? Snoo here. It's time we finally made it to the big leagues. Quadruple winged scarabs, forced delimirs on every map, elevated sextons, wandering path. This is the, the insane giga juicing style maps. I do this kind of uh, farming session once a league and usually it's only 50 maps, but today uh, I'm gonna go ahead and do 100 maps. And you know, we just did in my last perception versus reality video we just tested with god touch farming without any basically any magic find or hardly any investment uh, whatsoever going the complete opposite end of the spectrum this time and i'm doing this because well wouldn't you know the community has basically never been more skeptical as to whether uh more is more in terms of juicing is going crazy on the juice even viable anymore uh, can you expect to make even more currency by pushing more uh, currency into the maps i'm here to bring you the goods today just like usual so let me show you what we're rocking with here in the atlas this is a pretty tripped out atlas on wandering path it's essentially all in god touch farming uh let's see let's go ahead and start with the middle of course we're gonna have the mandatory nodes that give me increased quantity rarity pack size Things like that. Uh, going to be going shrines. Going to get one shrine on each map at least. Nothing spawns altars better than a, than a shrine set up in the middle of the map. So I do like the shrines. Of course, getting the shrine effect is kind of nice too. It's very cheap investment. And Wandering Path kind of have a lot of points to spare actually. Do many different things with it. Legion going all in. Legion not even taking the nodes down here because I don't really care about the Legion specific rewards for this farm. Going to be doing everything I can to pump as many Legions onto the map as possible. Abyss also doing abyss so this is the one situation where i absolutely feel like abyss is mandatory if you're going to do winged scarabs elevated sextants and the whole nine yards and abyss really does begin to shine even with its annoying characteristics of having to run around of course investing this much into a map it's kind of more about how much currency you're making per map than it is so much about how much you're making per hour but we'll take a look at both of those stats here in the end uh i went ahead and threw a few extra points this is something i discovered Last time, the expedition is actually not too bad with Wandering Path, and expedition uniquely seems e even a little bit easier to do if, when it comes to just trying to randomly get it onto the map. Uh, I can get a total of 12% extra chance to spawn an essence on top of 8% flat, which means 1 in 5 maps are going to have an expedition on the map. And I still get the explosive range uh, placement but I, I will not have a scarab devoted to this so you know the expeditions won't be nearly as juicy as they were last time before uh yeah so legion still there cannot take protracted battle or a chain of command so we are losing some value by going wandering path but i mean we're going for the biggest divine orb explosions possible expecting to lose money uh on the average map but to more than make up for it when the magic happens so yeah, and of course I'm doing Beast wherever I can. Um, again, more and more I, I've become a fan of Beast. I saw 14 Divine Orbs drop off of a Red Beast the other day. Uh, beast spawn on the front end of the map to help spawn a lot of extra altars indirectly uh, is another great reason I like it. Every single Red Beast you put on the map seems to add at least two Yellow Beasts too. So I, I'm even doing a beast bestiary scarab, which initially wasn't my plan. I was just going to run Einar on the map device, or yeah, on the map device as, as an extra master mission. But yeah, anyway, I'll explain that when we get into the scarabs here in a second. Uh, Delimir is forced on every map. It's nice to have a little bit of extra delirium time, so that's why these points are here. Beyond is actually even better with Wandering Path than without, although the Beyond boss tends to spawn very early in the maps anyway. So that is where all the points are going. It's a pretty nice tree and. Uh, It'll be shared to you in the description below if you like it. Oh yeah, Eldritch Minions. Um, the more I do the higher end juicing, the more I discover that actually losing Shadow of Hunger is not that big of a deal. Uh, the extra pack size here, as well as just all the insane amount of juice getting more Eldritch Minion spawns in general, does seem to kind of more than, if anything, more than make up for the Shadow of Hunger's loss. So I am warming up a little bit more as I continue trying Wandering Path, but it's taken a long time for us to get here. And I do want to say right out the gate that I definitely do not recommend this strategy unless, you know, you get a lot of currency to spare and you put a lot of currency into your build and you already have quite a bit of magic find also into your build uh, because it definitely seems like 
the non-wandering path variant, the lighter end of juicing, using a gloom shrine as a crutch, definitely it's going to be more favorable for the average player. But, you know, we're, we're now, we've now definitely entered territory where it's no longer an average character. This is the ascendant uh, tornado shot, which I can say I feel pretty confident that it is actually outperforming the Deadeye Tornado Shot Magic Finder, especially when it comes to Berserk and how I can use that with Legion, which is even more important for this farm than usual because I am using Winged Legion. I have to use the Winged Legion to get the plus two, plus two Legion encounters, not one. And then I'm forced to face off with the Generals as well in Delirium Mirrors. So getting that Berserk to uh, nuke them down really hard uh, is extremely uh, valuable. Winged Reliquary Scarab, Winged Le Legion Scarab, Winged Abyss Scarab, and Winged Bestiary Scarab adds five additional red beasts. This is also adding perhaps ten additional yellow beasts, something like that. Uh, I don't know exactly how, how that functions, but uh, again, I'm going to make an extra point. And when we open the first map, you're probably going to see a bunch of beasts spawn on the front end of the map. It's going to really, really help with those Eldritch Minion spawns, additional Eldritch spawns. For the Sextants, we're using Elevated Beyond Elevated Abyss. For a total of five or more Abyss on every map. Forced Deli Mirrors down the line. No reason to run Elevated on this. Don't get any extra value from it. And also don't get any extra value from running Elevated Plus One Legion. And that is the fourth Sextant. It's pretty obvious these are the four best Sextants. I mean, I have a hard time uh, suggesting another one. In fact, I even had a pretty hard time figuring out what to do when I subbed out for my Beyond Maps. Ultimately decided Hunter Traders is probably the best choice here. It's a little bit debatable, but I went ahead and did uh, Hunter Traders. Just so you know, uh, these are super premium maps. Uh, I've been holding these maps back because if I've been running them uh, over and over, I've actually deliberately not ran a lot of my uh, additional rare monsters or beyond maps because I knew I was going to use them for a farm like this at some point mid-league or towards the end of the league. And it's therefore, I am going to devote a bit of extra currency in the investment costs for these maps because these are not your typical maps. Now, a lot of them do have some pretty awful mods on them. They may have, um, you know, reduced effective auras. They may have minus maximum all res. They may have no regen. They may have what will end up being 96% reduced recovery rate. Uh, they may have, you know, extra crit. Uh, monsters less affected by your crits all kinds of really terrible mods that a lot of people don't run and there's something a little thing i want to point out to a lot of people you know like oh my god these maps are, are so valuable there's a lot of people who or those people who are buying and selling these maps usually have some pretty harsh stipu stipulations on what kind of map mods they're willing to accept and i am willing to accept any single map mod in here so i'm not even looking at, at how painful these maps are really just looking at the upsides in this case for the extra rare monsters and that is why there's 90 Divine Orbs over here, <laughs> because uh, roughly, let's see, yeah, it was roughly uh, 60 Divine Orbs covered the cost of the Sextants, and 30 Divine Orbs covered the cost of the maps, as well as a uh, slight uh, incremental uh, increased value points to the Scarabs, because the Scarabs are really worth about one-third to one-fourth of a Divine Orb, depending on which Scarab uh, you're looking at. Of course, you can transfer Scarabs over pretty easily with the Harvest switcheroo there but uh yeah that's a lot of extra uh currency devoted to kind of making the investment more proper more right and let's see for the sextant i mean both the abyss and beyond sextants i got them for a little cheaper but they're now listed around three divines a piece uh the mirror sextant actually quite cheap cheaper than it's been in a long time about 35 chaos a piece and then the legion sextant about 75 to 80 chaos a piece so that is where all of this is coming from again roughly 60 divine orbs devoted to all the sextants and about 30 divine orbs devoted to um differences in bulk pricing with scarabs as well as uh roughly an added value of about 10 chaos added to each map as well as running legion on each map so that is where all that came from so that is the introduction that's the start of it uh real quick we gotta take you down like usual, this is going to be a really big number. <laughs> 181. Look at that. Have you ever seen an investment cost that high? 181 divine. This is almost two divines per map invested. And again, I'm expecting to walk out of here with less than two divines on, on like the app on, you know, a typical map. But of course, sometimes when we're walking out with like 40 divines, hopefully 
So uh, we'll see. Also, uh, it cannot be understated. Winged Reliquary drops a ton of uniques, and uniques are still worth a lot this league. I I truly do expect to see like at least one Aegis Aurora and like an Unnatural Instinct probably at some point in this farm with how much juice there is on this map. Uh, but anyway, we're gonna see if this comes out uh, as well as I hope. I, my goal with this, now I've not done enough of these maps to know for sure, but my goal with this is to find bare minimum at least two, uh, at least 200 raw divine orbs to walk out of here with at least 200. So that would be at least two raw divine orbs per map on average. Uh, it, I'm hoping to get more like three, 300 raw divine orbs and 100 maps, but uh, we'll see. I'm not exactly sure how it's going to turn out. So we better get started. <laughs> Let's see how this goes. I can't wait to see how this goes. It's going to take a while. Definitely not going to complete this all in one day. This is pretty crazy level of farming. And uh, for most people who want to do this kind of farm, you're probably going to have to do it with an aura bot. Uh, if you're assuming you don't have eight mirrors worth of gear on character, but fortunately I do. I'm my own magic find caller. I am my own aura bot with haste. Uh, purity of elements, vitality, grace, hatred, <laughs> herald of eyes. Yeah, it's taken me a long time to arrive at this point, and, and it certainly does seem like this league for this kind of mapping is more aspirational than it's ever been. It, it is really, really rough on uh, on the character on the gearing because we're having to go magic find, try to get a deep, reasonable amount of magic find, not to go all in on magic find. Uh, but obviously, you know, you do have to have a fairly well-balanced character to pull off something like this. So here's the first map. Of course, I kind of picked hand-selected a really nice map here. 28% increased number of rare monsters, 45% uh, increased pack size, 139 item quantity. There it is all in there. So this is map number one. Do not have to pick a master on here. We are doing Eater of Worlds. Uh, expecting to fully level uh, probably 15 Awakened Exceptional Gems. We will be counting Beasts as well. So we're going to be counting, you know, Kraka Camaros and Venumal Plagued Arachnids or whatever they are. Uh, a few of the high tier Beasts uh, will be added into it. I mean, I am running the best tier scape. I am also going to be counting Cluster Jewels. Uh, so basically anything that I am specifically running, like on the map. Like if I'm forcing Deli Mirrors, I'm going to count Cluster Jewels, for example. Uh, these things are going to be counted. So here it is. Legion. And there. Map number one. Oh my goodness. Alright. So. I care very much about the altar spawns. I actually deliberately do not kill monsters in the very front end. Until I see the, uh, the influence spawn. There's the influence. Alright. So now I'm hoping that the beyond boss doesn't spawn immediately. Sometimes I get unlucky and he does. We're gonna see extra Eldritch minions spawning. There's red beasts here on the front of the map. This is immensely helping the number of uh, Eldritch minions that spawn. Random breach on the map, so we're not blocking anything. I don't get super high chance of, of all the uh, mechanics that I want to see, but you know, on the flip side, occasionally I'm gonna see something like a breach, which I will run. All right, so there's the Beyond Boss spawned a little bit earlier than I hoped. It's all right though. Rage capped out now. Go ahead and uh, pop, you know, Berserk. And unfortunately, I tripped a, an Abyss, which I don't want to do. I do not want to trigger any League mechanics. Uh, because I want to try and clear to the end of the map. And again, character has to be very fast, you know, to, to go pull this off here. Go all the way back to the beginning. Uh, in this situation, uh, I do need to hit a Legion ASAP to hold the mirror back. Uh, Abyss by itself just doesn't do it. Got to actually need to go see where the bosses are. So I see there's a boss there. You know, if I want to actually have a chance of opening this legion properly. Ah, oh, there's a few over that way. Okay, basically pretty much open that up. Not my greatest uh, <laughs> legion open. Okay, uh, ton uh, blueprints will not be counted. The final tally there. So, the yeah, one abyss gone. I'm actually going to float down to the front end of the map. I usually do the back end first. It doesn't really matter that much, but okay. We've got duplicate currency. That's a good altar. Uh, we do have kind of an awkward situation where a lot of the league mechanics are in the front end of the map, so it's kind of a good idea that I come back here. So one 
Legion is open there. That's sad, a Chevron. Okay, so I mean, it's gonna be pretty typical seeing things like Chevron just kind of almost expected to see like a Shavs or something like that in almost every map with a Reliquary Scarab like this. Not a real surprise at all. Okay, I'm pop Berserk, try to finish this Legion out. There it is. All right, definitely successfully open that Legion all the way. There's a Legion boss down there. The other Legion boss is up here. No, there he is. Okay, that Legion's basically all done. There is no currency god touched yet. I haven't, act I haven't actually seen a single god touched yet. But should be seeing <laughs> at least one random god touch every map on average, I'd say. Uh, with this many rares that are going to be on the map. I think I can manage to handle two abysses at once without too much trouble, even with the Legion connected. Oh yeah, and we're not going to be doing the map boss, like basically ever, except uh, when the invitation is up, ready for grabs. Now this is actually a situation where I think there's some content to be done inside here, yeah. So sometimes this happens where you have to go in uh, to clear the Legion all the way through. And you can see I can go ahead and open that up like that. Uh, a lot of people still unaware that the legions can spawn into the final boss room because it, it, the distance is short enough. If the obelisk is close enough to the door, uh, they can actually spawn in there. So you got to check. So you saw when I went in there, there was like seven rares <laughs> and the legion boss in there. So definitely don't want to be missing that. Got a subscribe from uh, Tom Matthew. Thank you for that. Nice of you. And this map is here coming to a close, kind of. But you can see the Delhi Mirror has been managed 100% successfully. And no, I couldn't have really performed any better, I don't think. Just got a couple unique. So this is just a kind of a typical map. You know, if I don't get lucky, if I don't see any God Touch in the map, then that's what's going to happen. I'm going to walk out of here with, you know, maybe one Divine Orb worth of loot. In total, and that just is what it is. Fortunately, it should get made up for in the end. Ah, this is a reduced recovery map, so you can see I'm having issues because blood rage is still going on. Uh, whereas my uh, vitality gem isn't quite strong enough here. There might be some monsters over here I can grab real quick. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Got a tiny little bit of leech there. But uh, end up, yeah, okay, look at my health there. It's pretty funny how it's kind of hanging there on thread there. Uh, that was just sort of inevitable. Couldn't really be stopped because, that, you know, a lot of people specifically will not, like if they're buying a maps like this, they would not even buy the map that I'm running here because it has 96% reduced recovery rate. Uh, but you can see that um, certainly aside from the very end of the map, it was not a big deal. You know, I could still run this map, still fine. I have 10 life on hit. I have crazy amount of life leech i have a bunch of uh life regeneration too so even with that situation it's fine i made a little bit of a mistake left the mariketh legion boss up without any headhunter buffs but uh that's fine i don't feel like i'm gonna lose out too much on that so this map is done except i do need to go back in and pick up the delirium reward <laughs> don't forget to do that thing i quite often forget to do uh the delirium rewards probably be fairly lackluster most of the time uh, but they'll add up over time. So there it is. You know, a couple of decent uniques. Uh, pretty typical results. When we see those Divine Orb explosions, I mean, my my max from the last farm was 30 Divine Orbs. I'm, I'm not really hoping. I'm kind of expecting to beat that, at least in one of these 100 maps, uh, to have a Divine Explosion beyond uh, just 30 Divines. Uh, but we'll see. Here's hoping. Map number two. Everyone Look at all those red beasts in the front. This is what I love about the red beasts. They just tend to spawn in there. I think it's because, you know, map can't really spawn other stuff on the front. Okay, there's the uh, influence. And look at this. Look at all this extra Eldritch. Bin. You can see the lightning bolts coming down. There's also the other kind that sort of delayed spawn. Uh, I don't want to try and kill too much in there beyond the Eldritch minions because that, at that point I'm just killing beyond monsters. And then risking spawning the Beyond boss prematurely. This is something I like to do to try and delay 
the Beyond Boss from spawning. I think it, I think it does work pretty well. It's kind of tricky though because you know you don't want to leave Eldritch minion packs up at the same time. And if you had to choose between leaving Eldritch minion packs up and <laughs> Beyond packs up versus just killing them all, uh, I would say kill them all. But as you know, as I perform the maps more and more, I get kind of used to how much how I go about clearing them sort of delicately, and this is great. This is a great scenario. So the Beyond Boss spawned basically at the very end of the map. Uh, it could have spawned later, you know, when I was doing Abysses, because I still get a lot of Beyond from Abyss, but I'm totally satisfied with that spawn timer. Uh, there's still a ton of Beyond minions that are up on the back end of the map, which may drop me, you know, Tainted Teardrops, Tainted Chaos Orb, Tainted Exalted Orb. Who knows what I'll find from there. All right, so that's a good start. The Legion opening at a good time. I'm going to pop Berserk here and absolutely annihilate this boss. This Beyond boss is in the deep end of the deli. I mean, he's basically the tankiest mob in the game at that point, and he still went down in, in a split second. And that was a pretty good testament to how strong this character is here. And now, you know, we're kind of entering the flow state, playing with the Rage. Rage going back up. Rage is going to cap out around the time this Legion opens. It's going to be perfect timing. I can go in and just kind of continue doing these uh, abysses. And just go in and even pop the next Legion. In fact, it's something I like to do. Clear one Legion while I pop the next one. It gives me sort of double value on uh, clearing. There's a God Touch there. It's a bad one, though, so I'm not going to get any loot from that. Yeah, most of the most of the god touches are actually not going to be very valuable. So, you know, obviously, we got to get lucky and roll the Lunaris, Solaris, or Shikari, or Innocent. It's good. We got the Templar boss here. Let's see how fast the Templar boss dies. Okay, well, he died before I even finished the sentence. So <laughs> uh, that's something my dead eye, my dead eye, generally speaking, wasn't really able to kill the Templar boss that fast here in the deli. Uh, even when I had about six five or six mirrors worth of gear I mean that that's I, I'm noticing I, it's a it's a noticeable difference uh, between the ascendant and the dead eye there it has a lot to do with rage and berserk the difference in damage is coming from we got three abysses running at once I, I trend I tend to try and keep it down to two because I can I can lose some of the value they start separating too much. Oh, well, there you go. We got our first uh, currency god touch. We got a fair spread there. 15 exalts, 14 divines. I didn't get gypped in any way, so that's just that's going to be kind of you know probably average. I'm expecting. I'm actually expecting an average of probably around 15 divine orbs for currency god touch uh, because in my last test with gilded, I got an average of 10 for currency god touch. So I mean, with this. Going all the way up to Winged Reliquary. And, yeah, I mean, I guess probably around 15, maybe a little less on average. Of course, you have to keep in mind I am putting beasts on the map, which means it's going to be a lot of red beasts and yellow beasts. Currency God Touch, which will drive down the average, because it's not going to count my magic fine. But I do believe the the beasts still accept the magic, uh, the magic fine stats from the map. You know, so this map has what? Uh, th this is not even a special wall. I haven't, I haven't gotten a single good altar yet. I don't think I got a single altar on this map. So this is baseline right here. 213 over 135. That's that's just baseline. I certainly expect as good or better on every map than that. Sometimes we're going to have all the way up to like 300%. More than double that. So that's going to be exciting. And in most time, most cases, that will... Uh, it'll just result in me not finding a currency god touch when I get that kind of roll, but uh, that's all right. So there you go. I mean, the first two maps there, I, th I think, uh, are a pretty nice showcase. Um, I know it may seem kind of crazy. Oh, my God, you got 14 Divine Orb uh, Explosion on the second map. You're so lucky. No, that, that's not lucky. I, I, I'll be, I'm already at a point when I'm doing Gilded and, and not Abyss and sort of less juice. I'm already at a point where I'm seeing a currency god touch like every eight to ten maps on average so with this setup with abyss added into it i mean I, i'm basically expecting a currency god touch on average once every five or six maps maps probably it's pretty frequent now what, what is going on here this guy's bugged i got a bugged look at this i, I got a bug beyond boss that's stupid <laughs> i think he truly is bugged i don't even think he's attacking me either 
I've never seen the Templar run around like that. Okay, well, bug boss bugged. So we are going to be keeping track of the timer on these maps. Uh, I think this is somewhere around seven minutes per map. And that map's done. What, <laughs> what in the world? Yeah, it doesn't suggest that I got a friend, I guess. All right, well, I'll take him with me. He can, he can help collect my divine orbs as I make them explode out of his friends. How about that? I'm such an idiot. I'm such an idiot. Why? Why did I go clear that? Four divine orbs, trash. That was just a random uh, god touch. I don't even know what it was from. I think that was actually... That might have actually been a delirium god touch. But yeah, I'm going to be triggered if I, get, if I see like a bunch of altars after I kill a guy like that. I don't know. It didn't matter in the end. It was all the same. So it's fine. Anytime you see like temporal bubble though, it's like an enhanced chance of being god touched because they, they pair up with the uh, other hard mods quite often like that. So magma barriers, temporal bubbles, entanglers, things like that. The whole shadow step assassin thing is actually quite nice on these legion bosses too. When I don't know exactly where the legion boss is, and then it teleports me onto it. And it's like, oh, okay, thank you. Just kill him instantly. Oh, Solaris Touched is here. We got ourselves some divines coming. Where is it at? There it is. Oh my god. That's what I'm talking about. Look how lucky that is, dude. 28 divines, 8 exalts. It's so lucky. <laughs> 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 feels good. Definitely feels good. I mean, 28's not that insane when you're when you're running maps like this, but that that might be the best explosion I get all in the entire hunter map set. That does have a decent chance of being the best one. And that was came courtesy of map number 10, maybe. I mean, we've already seen three currency god touched after 10 maps and uh, that definitely put my average well over uh, 15 divines I think and I'm dead for some reason I'm dead because there's not enough monsters on the map anymore yeah wondering of course Oh, oh, oh. Ah. Calm down. Calm down. It's bound to happen. We're going to be finding things like that in this farm. Obviously. I mean, you, can't, you can't see this many uniques and not find a couple of these. Hmm. What are you up to now? Six and a half divines. Well, well rolled too. This is a this is a pretty well rolled prototype. Although it might be the red beast. All right, where are you at, man? Are you the red beast, really? Or maybe okay, maybe it was maybe it was the blight monster. It might have been the blight monster. Oh my god. This will be the first time I ever got something out of Blight. No, it's gotta be that Red Beast. Ah, oh, it's a Red Beast right here. Yeah, Red Beast. Okay, so it's not gonna be that huge. But, I mean, it's gonna be... You know, that's some pretty nice conversions that are gonna take place inherently on the map. Not gonna get my magic find on it. Look how tanky this guy is. This guy's crazy. Actually, I have to... I'm gonna lose my uh, flask if I don't play this right. <laughs> no, we're in the very back of the deli, so I can't really mess with this guy. Right? I'm gonna have to. Let's see, I got him kind of low. I can kill him, finish him off later. I, there's no rush on me killing that guy. It's fine. I would like to kill him under the effect of the deli mirror, of course, for the added baked-in quant, presumably. So, uh, yeah, I 
guess I'll go ahead and do all this stuff here. Should be fine. <laughs> well, I finished him off, but it's not cold yet. I mean, this would be a, a nice case to have grapevines on. Uh, I completely failed that region, actually. Got in over my head there. Forgot I, I forgot I was even doing a region. <laughs> Whoops. Could I have divine count on the screen map session screen. I mean, that requires a lot of work to have that on there, but. I, yeah, I understand why that would be nice to have. Oh boy. What is this? <laughs> what is going on here? <laughs> we got some scarabs to collect. I gotta get back up there. I'm stuck here. That beast is dead. I might as well just... Alright, so... How is this still going on? Okay. Any more God Tucks like to show themselves on this map? Alright, here we go. I'm gonna go to collect my scarabs. Give me the scarabs. Alright, there it is. Uh, okay, I'm thinking maybe that actually... Uh, what? What? I need to go read the text on that beast again because that looks like more than a, just a few scarabs. What the heck? <laughs> uh, you know, Red Beast is supposed to be kind of mediocre loot. I, I don't know. Uh, the, the game just won't stop impressing me with, with enough with Red Beast. It just can't stop impressing me. I, I don't know what it is. Did I read that right? I didn't double check the secondary Archnem mod. Maybe that was like... Maybe it was... Maybe it was opulent. I didn't even see it. I don't know. I definitely scrolled over the beast though, so I mean, we'll get to see. I have nothing more to give. Oh my god. Maybe, maybe it's a deep in the deli. That was like 80 or 90% deli on the map at that point. I definitely played the flask right. I don't know what. Oh God! Come on, it's so bad. Shikari touched. What is that? No. Oh no! I have to collect these scarabs with the Shikari touched them. Oh man. Oh, oh. She just got real. She just got real. I got five portals. Oh dude, I'm actually like nervous right now. Oh no! How is there a Shikari touch still up? What the heck? Wait, was it a Beyond Monster or... Oh shit. Um, Alright, I gotta play this smart. I cannot kill that if it's a if it's a Deli Monster. I have to let the Deli go. I have no choice. That might have been a Shikari Deli. I think it was a Beyond though. Yeah, I think it's a Beyond. Because it, it had the, you know, whatever. Alright, so... Oh no, 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 no. This is so bad. This is so bad. Oh no. I can't kill him. I don't think I can kill him. I think this is actually super bad because he's gonna stop me from... I, I have to just try and grab the scarabs and try not to die in the process. I can't believe this happened. A blighted map. This is my first blighted map this league, by the way. Maybe if I can... I feel like I'm playing a... You know, sneaky game. He's like right there on the left. He's right there. I can't believe he's not triggered right here. I'm so lucky the game's letting me grab these. How many freaking winged scarabs is this dude? Oh my god, what? <laughs> I have no idea why there's Can this many. The what the heck? Well, we are going to get to count these scarabs afterwards. 
All right, let's see here. Where's this asshole at? Oh, he was, oh, okay. So he was a deli, no, no, there he is, all right. Wait, no, that's not him. Oh, this is him, okay. Here he is. Uh, oh, I have some damage. I actually have damage, though. He's pretty weak, effigy. He's effigy, okay. Does effigy convert bad? He's not that hard. Usually uh, a monster like this is pretty hard. Okay, he's he's hard on the offensive side apparently. I think I I think I'm just going to get wrecked because of effigy. <laughs> I think I, I think I'm just going to die because of effigy. I can't even Wait. Oh God. Off-screen him. That sounds risky. I'm gonna, I'll try it though. Off screen him. All right. I don't play like that anymore. You guys are so smart. What? 10, 20, 30, 5. 35 exalted orbs. You dropped 35 exalted orbs. <laughs> Obviously, I'm satisfied. I was expecting to not even, like, walk out of there with that monster. I honestly wasn't expecting. It must be Tornado Shot Ascendant. I love these clencher mat. That was absolutely clencher. That was the definition of clencher. And you know what? That is exactly what they designed this game to be right here. Like, that experience I had right there is exactly what they wanted. And my game crashed. Wow. That's an amazing time crash the game I feel so blessed right now <laughs> what I'm so lucky I'm so lucky right now like 35 I got a breach nice LOL. I don't actually know what that was from, but probably a Beyond minion. Or no, actually that couldn't have been a Beyond minion. The boss already, Beyond boss already spawned. So that was either just a regular monster on the map or Delhi or Eldritch minion maybe. Casual five divine looks. Fun. I really want to find that calm heart. Oh, hey, that's pretty good. I like how I, I like how I still got unlucky with the divine orb spread on that. <laughs> that's amazing. Drop 19 divine orbs like ah. Shikari Tuck. See him flying through the map. <laughs> Big loot. Hey, right on schedule, man. Basically finding these crazy uh, Divine Orb explosions maybe once every three or four maps. So it's, I'm actually beating the projections of once every five or six maps. It's actually once every three or four maps. And these are big, big drops, man. That's pure. I'd say that's, I mean, 19 Divine Orbs has got to be above average, even for this kind of juice. Got to be good. Yeah, that doesn't look like it's split with anything else, so take that. Take that, my delirium rewards. Maybe get a raw divine orb off of this deli currency reward. Oh, no raw divine, damn. Never lucky. I mean, it, it matters a lot more than you think it does. Eight mod corrupted maps, the value of that. The reason is because, see this multiplier, 206 increased quantity, 134% increased rarity. That is multiplicative with everything else. It's not additive with your magic find. So I have 56% uh, increased quantity, 625% increased rarity. That's 51% the increased quantity. So basically I have like 300% quant and... 1400% increased rarity, something like that. 
So if I was just doing Alk and Go, I would have half of those numbers. Now, the rarity thing is actually interesting because... Whereas Quant, you can pretty easily quantify the difference in Quant. Oh, hey, look, that's another uh, gun. You can pretty easily quantify the difference in the amount of loots you would drop because it'd be like one-to-one -one ratio. But rarity is different because with rarity, there, there's a certain amount of rarity, I guess, is needed where it's just sort of forced up to, to unique. So if you hit, like, I believe, if you hit, like, a certain threshold of rarity, you're, very, you're much more likely to convert something into a unique. Whereas if you have just a little bit of rarity, you might not even really convert hardly anything into a unique. You might just convert it into... Actually, to be completely honest, I'm not exactly sure how it works. I don't know if it goes from normal to magic and then it re-rolls it and maybe goes magic to rare. If just everything just starts off at, at normal or if everything can only go up one level. I don't know. So, say in the comments if you know the answer to that. I actually don't know how rarity works in this game uh, to that extent. But I get this feeling, like, it's, you especially see it with, like, Innocence Touched conversions, because you see all the Gilded Scarabs, you see all the, the Winged Scarabs. certainly seems like if you hit a certain threshold of Winged Scarabs, you convert, like, <laughs> most of the items into unique. And, yeah, I mean, I guess at a certain point it would be redundant to have too much rarity. But, like, let's say, for example... Let's say, for example, with, um, I don't know, I'm just throwing arbitrary numbers here, but 500% increased rarity makes half of the items, or ma makes a quarter of the items go unique and would therefore convert into winged scarabs. But let's say 1,000% uh, increased rarity doesn't double that. It actually, like, quadruples it. So instead of... Or not, or triples it rather. So let's say instead of twenty, let's say instead of a quarter of the items going to unique, uh, three quarters of the items go unique. So maybe rarity works in that way or something, which could explain why, for example, uh, you know, um, eight mod corrupted maps are so premium because they're enabling you to crank up your rarity into the thousands of percentiles without having some insane amount on your gear. That's one thing I love about rarity in this game, is it's actually fairly well balanced in the sense that uh, a lot of the rarity is attributed to the map and not from your gear. But th there's really not that much rarity involved in your gear. So we put such a precedent on getting, you know, more magic fine stats on your gear. Dude, you already have magic fine stats on the map. You have magic fine stats embedded into the monsters, especially and like doubly so with the arch nem the way arch nemesis works now. So it's more it's more beneficial for you to find a crazy tripped out arch nemesis monster that's like seven arch nem mods on an eight mod corrupted map with just a tiny bit of magic fine gear on you. It's more it's better to find that than to have just some you know three arch nem mod currency god with a, on an alk and go map with a boatload of magic find on your gear i would much rather take the the former scenario over the latter based on the kind of stuff i'm seeing this league which means it's even it's even more important to have an, an extra powerful character that doesn't go off the deep end trying to go you know Paper Tiger Glass Cannon Magic Finder that can barely handle the content. And even if you do handle the content, it's not all that efficient. Like, you're not actually running the maps nearly as efficiently as you could be. Wait, how many, how many Divine Orbs was that? Was that 14? I forgot. 14 Divines? Can I not have but a moment's respite? Oh. We're finding a, a Currency God touch every map now. Apparently. Shadow buff. Enlighten support off the yellow bees. <laughs> Thunder fist again. 
I keep finding that item. I have nothing more to I do. So you can put an enhance off hand level? Yeah, uh, or enlighten. Or empower. After gaining so much currency from last time, I, I upgraded to some enlightens. Oh my god, wow! Second Dorianis prototype on the 33rd map. That means I got... I got an Enlightened Support and a Dorianis Prototype on the same map. What the heck? That's dirty. I got so unlucky. Look at that. 18 orbs of annulment. 47 exalts. Oh. Oh my god. My best is 30 divines. I just got 47 exalts. If that was divines, I would have beat everybody, everybody in my community. I would have I would actually be the number one person in my community. Solo. I found. Wow. Get wrecked. I, I can't believe how bad I feel about a 20 Divine Orb drop. That's crazy how bad I feel. How bad that feels. Man. This must be what it feels like to get, like, you know, one Divine Orb off a of God Touch and then you see people get, like, you know, 80 Divines. It's, it's basically the same feeling, I think. Right? It's the same feeling. It feels like I just got one Divine Orb. Sir, I just got five chaos from a shikar. <laughs> Silence you! My luck is terrible. I am the most unlucky person to I swear to god, if that was another Dorian he's about to die. <laughs> I was I was about to just get up out of the chair if that was a Dorian he's prototype. Oh man. <laughs> right as I'm sitting here talking about I'm just messing. Horse and happy. It's a 20 divine uh, Do you know? I would have been like freaking out though, man. I would have been freaking out. It's coming. All that means is it's coming. So, you know, I, I once again, I have duplicate. I did have a duplicate basic currency altered 28%, I think it was. So, um, I, I suppose the exalt still got lucky because I guess I dropped 24 exalts it duplicated. That's wild. Absolutely wild. Well, I'm pretty sure I am winged scarabs for life now. Yep. This, this is going to require more testing. This is going to require more testing. My mom actually is proud of me, but I think she's more results driven. She, see, she sees me at like 3,000 subscribers, so she's proud of me, and then she sees me at 4,000 subscribers, and she's more proud of me, then she sees me at 5,000 subscribers, and she's even more proud of me. I kind of feel like I'm being judged based on the number of subscribers I have. I applaud your determination to continue god hunting. Dude, this is... This is actually fun. Like, I, I don't I don't want people to think that I'm not having fun. It should be obvious to anyone that I'm having fun, but a lot of people are having a lot of people are having so much not fun that they think that nobody else could possibly really be enjoying this. But I am. Totally am. I mean who, who doesn't enjoy that? Who, who wouldn't enjoy that? Uh, one map after another? That comes that comes one map after 20 divines. Can I not have the 48 time? exalts. At least the spread was fair that time. They were even. Yeah, the ding feels good. And then, you know, in the event that I actually see the avatar before the explosion, that's good too. Because that's actually the thing I love about it. I love the anticipation of it and... 
God touched are really rare, guys. They're really rare. I mean, you're, you're lucky to get a God... Any God touched, like, once every hundred maps, you're lucky. They're so rare. See how rare they are? I mean, I still have the stolen Solaris buff, and I get another God Touch. I'm, I actually I actually have two avatars on me right now. All right, Solaris is worn off by now, but... <laughs> yeah, well, there's still, I mean, there are some people out there who test, like, they run, like, I don't know, maybe they do actually run 100 maps, and they only see, like, a couple God Touch, but I think... Probably not running the maps right. They're certainly not running them the way I'm running them. Let's be real here. And if that's you in the chat, yes, I'm calling you out. If you if you're in the chat, if you're someone in the chat who's been saying this whole time, well, actually, you're just getting lucky and God touched are quite rare. You only see them like once every 30, 40 maps. You just keep watching me play. I just keep finding them every three or four maps. I can do this all day. I've been doing it all league. I'll just keep doing it. Just keep proving people wrong. <laughs> I haven't seen one since I tried. So you just quit playing the game. I said I, I literally expected that to drop at least once in 100 maps. There it is. A natural instinct. Check that off on your bingo box. Only one thing left is Doriani's pro or no, not that one. Uh, Aegis Aurora. Just gotta get Aegis Aurora and we get a bingo. Oh, man. And it's quite a bit more common than Unnatural Instinct, too. Oh my god, a red star. You know, it's funny. There's two red stars in that. What? Red star is, like, not even that big of a deal now. Like, one red star. It's like, oh, there's a red star somewhere. Yeah. Meh. Meh. Or it... Could could be uh, b -b 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 bingo, bingo, bingo card has been complete. Uh, around map forty three, maybe I don't know, like map forty three, maybe. Okay, I mean I did say I find probably find one or two, Aegis Auroras, probably more like two. So yeah, it's like the sixtieth of this league. I don't know. There's way too many to count. I basically find one a day. How many how many days since the league started? Because basically that's how many I've found this league. Basically just find one a day. Every once in a while I don't find one and then I find two the next day. You know you know you know what I mean? Like kinda get how those averages work out. Pretty easy to understand. No mage blood or headhunter drops. I know. It's ex it's actually extremely disappointing. It's becoming unforgivable at this point. The fact that I haven't dropped one of those yet. Now, people in my community dropping them, but not me. <laughs> nope, not dry anymore. Oh, we had a weak drop. It was kind of weak. And it dropped a lot more exalts and divines, I think, if I'm not mistaken. Let's see here. Uh, 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 Eighteen exalts, eight divines. I'm, I'm pretty sure. Actually, I'm quite positive that I have way more exalts and divines right now. <laughs> like, we're talking way more. Probably something like a hundred and. 60 divines and 200 exalts. 
<laughs> I think that's kind of the spread right now. Yeah, that's pretty messed up. Doesn't even count. People. Well, my friends, the bingo card is unequivocally complete now. Two. Two Aegis Lords. There it is. Never doubt. And we still got like 50 maps to go. We're only halfway done. I, I, so I guess I'm going to get four Aegis Aurora's and two Unnatural Instincts. That must be what's going on here. Yeah, two prototypes already. I didn't even think about prototypes, but they're dropping. They always spawn that late. I got so much beyond on this map, it's ridiculous. I don't even see that there. Shakai touch, booyah. <laughs> yeah, nice. I saw that temporal bubble, I was like, dude, what the hell, man? Look at this again, though. Again? Again? Again! 22 divines, thir four, 13, no, 13 divines, 22 exalt. Shikari touched in here we got another we got two shikari touches in a row now so there's just 13 divine orb last map now we're gonna see something again uh it's already released so i don't know where it is but it's i guarantee i'm guaranteed to get it unless i failed the map or something it might be a beast because it's still alive but i don't think it's a beast though I don't know where it is. I don't have any good altars. I, I, I think maybe I got a duplicate altar, but I don't even think I got that. Yeah, it's just standard wandering path percentages here. Oh well. Get ready. It's a hundred percent here, like it Oh here it is, right here. Yeah, okay. That was really not very good. Uh, split with amulets. Unique amulets. Okay, actually, I mean, I, I've been pretty lucky that I haven't had them split much on me yet. In this session, so. Yeah, it was a, it was a bad split. It's alright. Have to keep finding more currency god cards. That simple. You did it all by yourself? Chess League. Well, we're on our way to four. Four should be easy. I already got three and I'm only halfway through. I guess I have passed map number 50. easy. Oh! Solaris touched! Speak of the devil. I see which mob it is, too. Verify. Come to Papa. Where you at, pretty boy? <laughs> 20 plus? Obviously, I can't complain about a, 
bad split that turns out to be 18 divines. 18 divine on a bad split. Mm. Well, I think I better accept that one. Well, we got almost 50% chance of dupe currencies, but no other alternates. And there's our first god touch of the day, and obviously I did not dupe that. Oh man, the exalts are just running away with it right now. <laughs> Twice as many exalts as divines dropped. Again. It's really brutal what's happening to me right here with the Exalt uh, Divine Ratio. I've never seen anything like it. Uh. I got something like 200 Divines and 250 Exalts. Or something like that. Right now. I don't know where that was from. That's not the Legion or the Abyss. That came out from beyond Monster, probably. But, oh man, another lackluster drop. And it did drop more Exalts and Divines again. <laughs> Only a little bit, though. Uh, well, we got two baby God touched. Bad split. It's like the standard drop, like just the default drop of a good split is probably like 15 to 20 divines. I had to guess. Oh my god, yes! <laughs> I don't even care that it's garbage. Oh, uh, I can't believe that actually happened. <laughs> this is so bad, though. <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> I saw it taking so little damage. I was like, wait, what? Could it be true? You're looking at around it. Oh my god, we got a currency god touched. All right. Hold the phones. Mm, not that great. Not that great. Yep, split with uh, unique rings. Here it is, my friends. We got the closing, the results of 100 maps. Maximum juice, Delhi mirror style. Here it is, uh, dump tap A, B, and C. And it started getting so hectic, I had to go ahead and buy a new dump tab. <laughs> so dump tab D is here. Uh, nothing is counted at dump tab D. Uh, this is where I'm keeping my extras, uh, things we're gonna add on uh, to the final tally. So dump tabs A, B, and C are counted in. Excellent, of course. And let's just take the snapshot here. So I can show you. We are looking at 218 raw divine orbs in 100 maps. Oh, I wonder what you thought I was going to get. Um, I figured I was going to get somewhere between 200 and 300. Uh, the fact of the matter is, I was looking pretty good uh, for 300 after the halfway point, and then the RNG really shifted against my favor. Uh, as you can see, uh, here here's something I'm not very happy about. <laughs> I mean, that that's on that's like 52 more exalted orbs than divine orbs. <laughs> that's called being unlucky, my friends. Very unlucky. Uh, but at any rate, uh, we can't have everything we want. Uh, you can see I did get an unnatural instinct. Uh, these would have been the highlights anyway. Three Aegis Auroras, two Dorianis prototypes. Those make up the high value uniques. They're all right here. I mean, just look at this. This is this is a lot of uniques. Uh, a lot of 
decent uniques definitely not the normal picture i mean just just an entire dump actually more than one page <laughs> worth of uniques in total uh, my goodness yeah, so these are the big ones. Absolutely, I'm going to count them for this farm using a winged reliquary scarab. I, I wouldn't have been the least bit surprised if I found a headhunter or mage blood in this farm. Uh, but these, these are old faithfuls here. They're they're fairly dependable to see, you know, gilded or a winged reliquary. If you're running a winged reliquary scarab and you do a ton of maps, you're going to see some of those uniques for sure. As far as uh, divination cards now we're not farming divination cards of course to get some wing scarabs i did get one samurai's eye randomly from the div div card altar but i mean just absolute dry wasteland aside from that uh emblems i have a few extra but i did have nine full sets which i pulled out and i don't know apparently i left a full set in here by accident oh we'll just leave it there uh, but yeah, currency is the name of the game. Primary farm was divine orbs, and they make up the vast, vast, vast majority, as you can see the total value here. Uh, 19 simulacrums, you know, 95 orbs of annulment, 272 exalted orbs. Uh, the tainted currencies are there too. Uh, a few, not crazy, but, uh, oh yeah, I did get a couple of empowers, and... You know, last time I checked, it wasn't counting my Enlightened, so actually, I'm glad I caught that here. I did find an Enlightened support, and for some strange reason, it's not being counted. There it is. Well, just have to count it on the side, I guess. <laughs> Put it right here. This happens. There's always, you know, some, some weird item that's not being counted when it should be. And yeah, anyway, that's it. I'm going to scroll through here. 182 items on here. You can take a snapshot if you want uh, for verification. This was done on Twitch, uncut in three different parts. Those videos are there. The, the link to the first one is in the description below. POB is in the description below. The uh, Atlas passive strategy is also there. Uh, yeah. Okay. So, let's see how much currency we made. <laughs> or didn't make, right? Because, you know, the perception is maybe, maybe I didn't actually make anything. So, be right before I do the calculations here, I do want to point out, I, I did save, you know, all the marks here. Uh, probably should have used an Excel sheet here. Uh, but anyway, uh, 213 of the 218, <laughs> surprisingly, were from Currency God Touched. And it looks like there were 19 of them counting Innocence Touched. Now, I am counting Innocence Touched uh, as, as a currency God Touched in this. Uh, because when you actually go and, and do the calculation of how much winged scarabs are worth, it does turn out that they're worth you know, almost as much as the Divine Orb in terms of their spread of how much of each drop. You can see here, uh, in so out of 17 uh, actual currency God Touched, because there were two Innocence touched 12.5 divines per currency god touch and in this case this is skewed pretty heavily up but 43 scarabs per innocence touch that was primarily on account of a 65 <laughs> wing scarab banger there in the uh, in the mid portion of the run so that's pretty Decent, I think. A, a little bit, actually, I think this is a little bit below projection. I was projecting closer to 15. You know, last 100 maps session I did with Gilded Scarabs, I got 10 Divines per God Touch. So maybe I got a little bit lucky on that one. Uh, and or maybe a little bit unlucky on this one. But anyway, uh, that is the spread. So you can see that, it, uh, you know, it's 19. Let's see, it's 19... Currency God Touch, including Innocence, means I got one premium God Touch every five and a quarter maps, basically. And that, that fits in perfectly with the expectations. I was seeing a random God Touch, you know, basically every map. More or less on every map. I was seeing some kind of uh, God Touch. And, uh, you know, some maps I didn't see any. Some maps I saw two or even three. Yep. Yeah, so... That's a lot of God Touched Monsters, and that's because I was juicing the map up 
really hard. So, so normally I see more like when I do my normal speed juicing strategy with less juice, I see like one in every eight to 12 maps maybe. Uh, so basically seeing twice as often here, about twice as often. Yeah, so 181 divine orbs there. We got 384 as part of the gross. Of course, this does not paint the total picture. I mean, you can pretty well see right off the bat that obviously currency was made here. So let's get that out of the way. Clearly, uh, this does earn some currency. Now, uh, it's interesting that the value of full emblem sets is going up now. <laughs> So this is a good time to start farming Legion for Legion specific rewards, which I mean, we were throwing four or five Legions on each map, but actually I didn't get n as nearly as many full sets as I would usually because uh, I was not uh, prioritizing just Marketh and Templar. But for at any rate, we are going to pull uh, a total of nine, nine out of here. So that is going to be 4.5 divines there. For the emblems full set and then the rest of the emblems and splinters are just still in the dumb tabs uh then i i was able to level basically two and a half full sets of awaken exceptional support gems each counting at one divine piece at this point in the league they're actually worth more than that uh fully leveled but that is at any rate that's 12 uh plus the th i was able to level a full set of these greater multiple projectile supports which uh, take longer to level and they're actually worth even more fully leveled as opposed to unleveled uh i value them at around two divines a piece fully leveled so that would be 18 divines in gems leveled this time and i highly recommend actually focusing on leveling gems i was quite surprised at just how much more experience i was getting on my gems with this farm compared to you know my usual speed juicing it really is a testament to just how much uh, added juices on these maps and they took they took a fair bit more time too. Uh, th it, these maps did take about almost seven minutes between six and seven minutes per map, counting hideout time. So it's quite a bit more time. We do have some strong uh, some log books here. They're worth about forty chaos a piece. So for four of them, a little bit less. Uh, it's about one divine for four of these. Oh, uh, I should scroll them. They are all black scythe mercenaries. Genetic uh, generic. Uh, log books there and then we do have some cluster jewels now actually I forgot to check these here all right so we got one that's like a hundred we'll have to remember that all right and we got one here yeah that's kind of borderline not worth that much 20 or 30 uh, basically these dropped as red stars and yeah these are cold eights Passives here, 30 or 40, yeah, but basically like 40, 40, 20, 100. Uh, you know, I'm just going to count it as one divine. Obviously, I would be able to sell all those for one divine too. So, oh, wait, no, I forgot about this guy right here. This is the one that can be worth like 10 divines if it hits, but uh, not quite. All right, so, okay, well, I guess I'll count it as 1.5 there. And then I also found a couple of ventors that are clearly going to sell for something a few divines and i also found uh an eyes of the great wolf perfect quant roll with fire damage you know i checked on this who, who really knows what this will sell for at least a few divines i guess uh but i'm not counting these i'm not counting these well rolled items um i mean if we go through here and we see just how many ventors <laughs> ventors there are uh it's pretty obvious that uh you might find one well well rolled one out of that many, uh, but at any rate, I'm not going to count the supremely well rolled uh, Ventors here. So we're just counting everything that's right here on the left, spaced out. Oh, and an enlightened support, which is worth hmm, at least 1.5 divines. So we're going to add this amount to the gross. So let's see what it is. Okay, so we did 384.98 plus 4.5 plus 18 plus 1 plus 3. Okay. Alright, so the more adjusted gross. 411.48. And then take that minus that whopping 
investment cost of 81.41 and we arrive at 230.07 divine orbs and that's mostly raw divine orbs so that's one of the really nice things about this farm is that you're farming ultra high liquidable currency you know the most desirable type of currency that you can liquidate most of what it what is farmed here and this was over the course of I believe it was 11 and a half hours yeah if i did the math right so it's about you know it's about six and a half minutes per map six 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 to seven minutes per map uh, plus a little bit of hideout time roughly 11 and a half hours so we're going to take this divided by 11 and a half and oh wow i hadn't actually done this ahead of time but i didn't expect it to be that i knew it was <laughs> going to be somewhere around uh 20 divines per hour it was basically right on the nose okay uh 20 divines an hour Okay, so that's the result. Uh, I still have final thoughts I'm going to give, but as usual, we got the big gambling portion. And it's going to be an exciting one today because there's way more pre <laughs> high stakes, super high stakes uh, gems here. We're going to double corrupt and some, you know, moderately staked uh, corruptions over here as well. So be on the lookout for that. Snoo snooey RNG that we all know is coming, right? It'll still be a full highlight video of all of them brick. Oh man, I've done said it now. Just for that, I'm gonna send this up just for Alderum's comment. I'm definitely sending the next gem up. It's on you, buddy. That's on you. <laughs> What's this worth? <laughs> I deserve a reward for that one. I've been trying to hit that on the Prism Guardian forever. <laughs> that's uh, that that's that's a pretty good Aegis Aurora. Can somebody uh, go check the price on that for me, please? This is a good temple. I'm thinking this Enlightened's about to go up. I'm thinking this Enlightened's probably going to go up. And, and this is going to be the... This is going to go down in history as the best double corruption temple of all time. If this Enlightened goes up right here. Double up? Hello? <laughs> we have the results of the gambling portion of the video. And... Wow, would you look at that? I actually got some halfway decent results on the divination cards. Wealth and power in the Sephiroth, as well as a couple of hooks here. Uh, it's going to put me... Or wait, was that three hooks? Three hooks? Whoa! Uh, that's going to put me a little bit up, I think, overall. So I'm just going to pick these up here, since there's still not that many. And we're going to go take a look at the gem results. Well, not my typical results, but eh, typical results for the average person, I guess. Four up, including one of the big ones. Actually, a double up, which means I'm going to wear it because I want to look cool and have a 623. Well, I'll just sell that one. And then we also have an up and enhance, a second up enhance, and an up greater multiple projectile support. So, just looking at the gems alone here, I'd say pretty even. Came out pretty much even. Uh, maybe a little bit ahead, given the fact that, you know, on average, uh, you actually kind of make currency if you come out dead even uh, a little bit. Which is why I count the gems worth one divine orb fully leveled, at the very least. So, that's actually not the exciting part. The exciting part is when I scroll over here to this monster Aegis Aurora. I can't believe this double corruption. Uh, I have no idea how good this is. Because I've never played Righteous Fire. Uh, but my community tells me it's super GG. <laughs> like, one of the best double corruptions you could probably get. Uh, I did check the market a little bit. It looks like it's probably somewhere between 50 and 100 Divine Orbs. Uh, in value. This is unfortunately not a super well rolled one. You can see it's uh, 381, uh, but the baseline armor is actually quite bad. Only around the maybe 15th percentile. I know uh, I know they care a lot about that. 
the value of that. So, anyway, obviously phenomenal Aegisaur. That's not even it, though. I also got the coveted elemental weakness on hit with Sedima's Touch. That puts this all the way up to about 20 divine orbs as a baseline. And that's not even counting the second implicit on here, which should have some value. Uh, it definitely is better than nothing. Uh, you could you could potentially have, you know, your Val Haste gem in there. You could have, you know, Blood Rage in there. I don't know. You have a few different things. Uh, then also a, a quirky little gull <laughs> double corruption. Somebody said EA maybe might want this. A gull because it's a uh, fire on fire implicit. I mean, obviously I want the reservation efficiency, but I uh, did manage to save one of the relicus's impatience too. Yeah. So that is it for the gambling results. Let me tell you my final thoughts on this. So, uh... If you had asked my final thoughts after the first day, which, in which case I was on pace for earning 300 divines and 100 maps, I would have said, you know what, Th this this strategy, not just I mean not just viable, but uh, this might even be the one. This might actually be like the best thing you can do. Uh, this kind of strategy. On second thought, uh, after experiencing some, after experiencing some not so great RNG there on the uh, on day two farming, I'd say. I, I am going to continue looking into this uh, winged reliquary approach, but I definitely think, um, you know, I would have said this either way, going elevated beyond really dumb choice uh, as far as the, the cost of the section is concerned. Even elevated abyss is kind of crazy price. You could do like unelevated and it wouldn't be so bad. Uh, I think I could still justify going a winged reliquary scarab without maximal juice on everything else. Uh, I definitely like the delirium mirror, sexton of course. Uh, the the sort of sister strategy to this would of course be you know 80 or 100 percent Delhi uh, orb farming uh, which is actually something I'm gonna try to do uh, here coming up eh, fairly shortly uh, but in the immediate future off stream what I'm probably gonna do is I'm gonna keep trying out this uh, reliquary scarab uh, thankfully because the winged reliquary scarabs can be swapped around on the harvest side because of that they're never going to be exorbitantly overpriced they're never going to have some insane issue where there's just the market is just completely dried up on them uh it, it, they'll have a place you know and again with my character with my gear i know i can do these maps i can maybe scale back you know drop an abyss drop the <laughs> beyond percent from 35 elevated to 25 normal um maybe drop maybe even drop the winged uh, probably, yeah, drop drop all of the winged scarabs, just go gilded. Or in the case of Legion, maybe even just do rusted. And yeah, might even just do that and just get through the maps a fair bit faster. Keeping the same strategy. Uh, that That's what's kind of going in the back of my head. I think I'll make more currency per hour uh, if I did that. But uh, you can see there was a lot of currency made uh, per map. In fact, I uh, should probably double check that, huh? Yeah, I mean, there was 2.3 Divine Orbs made per map. I don't know a lot of people care about uh, the per map basis, especially when it comes to higher level juicing. For me, that ended up being 20 Divines an hour. Uh, my character runs extremely quickly, though. Uh, so for most players, it, it would be less than 20 Divines per hour, but probably still somewhere in the like the 15 to 20 Divine per hour uh, range. Uh, if you had a similar similarly geared character and you know that that doesn't mean you have to have eight mirrors or whatever uh it does probably mean you, you have to have maybe one or two <laughs> one or two mirrors worth of gear uh absolute uh, absolutely mandatory headhunter uh, for this farm to pull this off for sure and i would definitely not do uh you know just kind of like all in paper tiger uh magic finding with this strategy no uh but i feel pretty good about it uh it came out I didn't really know what to expect, but I do feel like it kind of came out as expected. I was sort of thinking in the back of my head, you know, I'm making 20 to maybe 30 divines an hour at the highest amount uh, when the RNG is a little bit better. I'm hoping this thing will make at least 20 divines an hour. Yeah, and I suspect there are a lot of people out there who thought this was going to make, couldn't even like hold a candle uh, to, to a strategy like that uh, because, you know, more juice means you lose money is what a lot of people uh, are thinking still at this point so hopefully I was able to prove that uh, it is possible you know to first of all to 
God Touch Farm, as usual, uh, something I've been showcasing a lot lately, but moreover, to really go heavy-handed on the Jews and to actually invest uh, in a big way in the map, because that was sort of the, the final bulwark that uh, some people have uh, to my strategies, is that, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm being a little bit cheeky with my investment strategies. It's kind of cool, but, I mean, it's not really heavy juicing, right? Uh, but here, this definitely was. This absolutely... <laughs> categorically was uh, some of the heaviest juicing that you can possibly do in the game and it worked out pretty well actually and who knows uh, maybe with some better RNG it would be even better in fact I'm even inclined to say that it might in fact be the best strategy or at least at least as far as winged reliquary scarabs go might be the best route because uh, eventually you're gonna find a headhunter or mage blood on the ground for sure I mean I've easily dro I mean I've probably dropped Obviously, I can't count them, but my goodness, I must have dropped. Let's see if I try to think about this. Maybe a. Let's see, I probably dropped maybe 10 per man. Yeah, somewhere between 5 and 10 uh, unique heavy or leather belts. So, somewhere between 500 and 1,000 unique belts that could have been a mage blood or a headhunter and so most people i think are estimated maybe somewhere between somewhere around one in a thousand or i'm sorry not one in a thousand one in five thousand somewhere in there uh potentially um certainly no more than one in ten thousand so you know if you did this farm enough you absolutely would uh, eventually find or should find a mage blood or headhunter not so much the case with the uh lower level investing you could definitely go the entire season without seeing it but uh i will be very surprised if i continue using this uh winged scarab reliquary scarab and i continue doing you know farms like hundreds of maps this way i'd be extremely surprised if i don't uh at some point drop a raw mage blood or headhunter yeah so that could be kind of the the real chase in the end farming god touch along the way quite a bit fun uh, can be a tiny bit frustrating sometimes when, you know, you see 47 Exalted Orbs drop and only 20 Divine Orbs. Uh, that, that can be a little bit irking, but aside from that, I uh, definitely uh, had a lot of fun. And again, I can only recommend this strategy really as a solo player if you got a whole bunch of currency floating in the first place and you already got a whole bunch of currency invested into the gear. Try it out with uh, Orobot, though. Might not be so bad with Orobot. So I'll leave you guys on that, and as usual, the highlights will keep coming. I got another great highlight coming to you after this <laughs> uh, video shortly after. So thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.